lawful notice requiring a hearing has been served to the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. They have been informed of the following. From we the people. To the Court Clerk. Supreme Court of the United Kingdom, Parliament Square, London. Lawful notice and required hearing. For context, you are considered informed that all meanings in this and all communications are taken from the Oxford Dictionary of English, or as commonly understood by living men and women. They are not to be confused with legalese or any other language. All character layout, whether capitalised, lowercase, or a combination of both, are what is commonly recognised by living men and women, and not to be taken in any other way or meaning. Our position in this communication is that of living men and women standing under God's law, also known as the Creator's law, natural law, universal law, common law, etc., and operating outside of the jurisdiction of statutory rules and man-made legislation. We do not work for any State Department or the Crown, or operate under a license, as we do not require permission from another man or woman to run our lives peacefully. If you require the meaning or definition of any word, sentence or paragraph in this document, then this can be done by submitting a written request within seven days from the receipt of this notice. In relation to our requirement, we understand that the Supreme Court consists of selected judges from within your system. We also concede that you will wish to select judges to adjudicate in this matter, and to assist you in this process, we have no objection to using your place of business and your selected judges, provided they are of sound mind and are mentally competent. Any judge that fails to recognise a living man before them would not be of sound mind. It should also be noted that any judge that also speaks to a dead entity known as a person would also not be of sound mind. We the people, represented by John Smith, a living man and CLC diplomat, write to you as we require a meeting to obtain three rulings from the Supreme Court. The subject matter to be addressed are the crimes committed against the people by statutory authorities. These crimes are numerous and varied, which confirms that these crimes are not singular issues but are ongoing. We the people who stand under the Declaration of the Common Law Court 2019, Exhibit 1, put before you a selection of different issues which confirm our position. While this confirms that we stand together, it is also used to confirm that we have various crimes that they relate to. Should you require additional cases, we will be happy to provide them in larger numbers. It should also be noted that this number was restricted so as to assist you and to reduce the workload. While we have attached an index of people and a copy of the paperwork for each case, we wish to list below some of the issues that we are addressing. This is not exhaustive. Council Tax Issues Tax Issues Bailiffs' Unlawful Behaviour Criminal and Unlawful Police Behaviour Kidnapping by the State Unlawful Detention by the State Unlawful Imprisonment Theft by Using the Proceeds of Crime Undertakings Various Driving Issues Criminal Coercion Slavery Unlawful Activity by the Courts Unlawful Behaviour by the Judges Unlawful Behaviour by the United Kingdom Attorney General Criminal and Unlawful Council Behaviour by Members of Parliament Criminal and Unlawful Behaviour in Relation to Bankruptcy Issues Theft of Property, that is Children Theft of Property through Unlawful Evictions Theft of Money from Bank Accounts by Obtaining Money through Deception The Dismissal of Employees for Failing to be Vaccinated the enforcement of unlawful COVID legislation. The failure to comply with common law court orders. The failure of the state to assist with the enforcement of common law court orders. The census. Criminal coercion, fraud and slavery. The refusal to accept common law court passports and the people's right to travel. The refusal to accept common law court travellers' documents and the right to travel the theft of CLC documents and the refusal to accept the authority of the people, the theft of motor vehicles by statutory authorities, 
the refusal of statutory corporations to accept the authority of the common law court, the standing of living men and women, and the common law court paperwork, deeds and orders. In relation to the above issues, although they relate to a great many cases, they do in fact only require three decisions, which are the same for each case. Each of the cases referred to are irrelevant until these three issues have been addressed, therefore establishing whether or not the cases should have proceeded in the first place. Rulings Required 1. Confirmation that the statutory corporations, judges and courts have no authority over living men and women. 2. Confirmation that the statutory corporations, judges and courts have no jurisdiction over living men and women. 3. Confirmation that the statutory corporations, judges and courts are binding the people into slavery through the use of the fictitious name, legal name, attached to them. While we are aware that the Supreme Court has no authority or jurisdiction over a living man or woman, we are aware that the individuals committing these crimes against the people are bound by your court decisions. Note. It has become clear that under the Clearfield Doctrine, Exhibit 2, which we are sure you are fully aware of, the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom has been operating as a commercial enterprise, without full disclosure to men and women, who were deceived into believing that you were a lawful authority and a court, as the statutory authorities in these cases were also operating as registered corporations, they were guilty of several crimes under common law, and any actions and decisions they have made were clearly an opinion and not lawful. Under Halsbury's Laws of England, in the year 2011, under the heading Administrative Courts, all courts acting in an administrative capacity are both unlawful and illegal. This means that any man or woman that causes a tort under common law is responsible in their private capacity and therefore will be required to remedy the situation or face a common law court. Commercial courts can only operate with full disclosure, by mutual contractual consent and with equal consideration. This they have failed to do and have intentionally committed fraud with menace in order to make a financial gain. This, of course, is unacceptable and will require immediate redress. Due to the failure of the corporations and courts involved to disclose terms and conditions and the lack of a lawful contract that has been agreed and seen by all parties involved, these parties were required to produce a copy of their contract and confirm their standing. There is irrefutable evidence of clear profit-making practices by the corporations and courts involved. This confirms a fraud upon the people who no longer find this acceptable. 1. I, John Smith, write to confirm that the Common Law Court Great Britain and International was created on the 11th of June 2017 to address the failings in the statutory judicial system and to provide a lawful remedy for living men and women. 2. I write to confirm that as part of the Common Law Court's responsibilities, it keeps a record of declarations for births of living men, women and their property, that is, children. 3. I write to confirm that the Common Law Court keeps a record of the business ownerships for fictitious names, that is, legal entities, thus confirming that the use of them without the owner's consent, authority or jurisdiction is unlawful. 4. I say that I, John Smith, have confirmed my standing as a living man, having submitted my declaration of birth to the common law court. Accordingly, I have obtained a lawful court deed by way of a birth certificate, under the reference BC forward slash 17 forward slash 1, which was issued by the common law court, Exhibit 3. My declaration and CLC birth certificate have been established in a court of record and as a fact in law during a criminal case in Paisley Sheriff Court on the 28th of February 2019. 5. I say that I, John Smith, confirm that I have obtained ownership of the fictitious name Mr. John Smith and that I have obtained a lawful court deed by way of a business ownership certificate. Reference FN forward slash 17 forward slash 1, which was issued by the Common Law Court, Exhibit 4. The ownership of my fictitious name has also been established in a court of record and as a fact in law, during a criminal case in Paisley Sheriff Court on the 28th of February 2019.
In relation to this case, the statutory corporations, judges and courts involved are guilty of binding the people into slavery through the use of the fictitious name or legal fiction. To assist this process, the statutory corporations, judges and courts have acted unlawfully, while ignoring the authority of the people and by using criminal coercion, intimidation and threats. I write to confirm that the statutory corporations, judges and courts involved are committing a fraud upon the people to obtain their property. This fraud also included the failure to identify the defendant, either a living man or woman, or a legal fiction and criminal coercion. The statutory corporations, judges and courts in these cases are guilty of using the courts and criminal coercion to target living men and women by using statutory rules. I also write to confirm that in relation to these issues, unless the judge could confirm that they had superior authority to the common law court, the people and God, the common law court deeds referred to cannot be ignored. I confirm that until such time as it is established that the court had the authority and jurisdiction to deal with these issues, they have been acting ultra vires with bias and have erred in law. In issuing any and or previous orders, the statutory corporations, judges and courts are responsible for committing fraud, theft of property and criminal coercion. I now write to confirm that as a person or corporation is unable to obtain parity with a living man or woman, statutory legislation is unenforceable without consent, a valid contract, authority and jurisdiction. To force compliance is criminal coercion, slavery and a breach of our inherent birthrights. This is confirmed and established by the Clearfield Doctrine, Exhibit 2, the Declaration of the Common Law Court, 2019, Exhibit 1, and a Common Law Court lawful notice dated the 28th of April, 2019, Exhibit 5. I confirm that the statutory courts are all corporations and can only deal with a person or corporation. They will never obtain parity with a living man or living woman and as such they will never have any authority or jurisdiction over them. I confirm that contract law establishes that for a contract to be valid, certain conditions must be fulfilled. One of these conditions is that there must be full disclosure. This was not the case. Given the failure to identify the defendants in these cases and the use of the legal fictions against the living men and women. I confirm that a valid contract also requires the consent of all parties involved. This was not the case, as we the people had not consented. I write to confirm that the legislation which has been used to obtain previous orders was statutory. This was not enforceable against living men and women or their property, and any attempt to enforce such an order would confirm the use of criminal coercion and slavery. I confirm that in addition to the above unlawful activities, the jurisdiction of the agents working for the mentioned parties have been proven to be unlawful. It is being stated by we the people. The Declaration of the Common Law Court 2019 stands as a founding document and establishes the sovereignty of living men and women from birth. This position confirms that the statutory corporations, judges and courts have no authority to issue any order against a living man or woman. It also confirms that the court has failed to comply with the Declaration of the Common Law Court 2019 and is therefore guilty of binding the people into slavery. I confirm that the statutory corporations, judges, courts and their agents are guilty of the following crimes. An abuse of position, theft of property, kidnapping, criminal coercion, uttering, the failure to accept the positions of living men and women, refusal to comply with common law, tyranny and treason, to name a few. I also write to confirm that the parties in the attached cases have breached the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights 1948, and specifically Article 4, No one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. Article 7. All are equal before the law, and are entitled without any discrimination to equal protection of the law. All are entitled to equal protection against any discrimination in violation of this declaration, and against any incitement to such discrimination. 
Article 12. No one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home or correspondence, nor to attacks upon his honour and reputation. Everyone has the right to the protection of the law against such interference or attacks. Article 18. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief, and freedom, either alone or in a community with others, and in public or private, to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. Article 20. No one may be compelled to belong to an association. In addition to the above, we the people refer you to the following Supreme Court rulings which establish our positions as living men and women. These are applicable to our cases. That the following Supreme Court ruling confirms the unlawful behaviour of the various parties. Montgomery v. State, Supreme Court ruling. No corporate jurisdiction over the natural man. Supreme Court of the United States, 1795. Inasmuch as every government is an artificial person, an abstraction, and a creature of the mind only, a government can interface only with other artificial persons. The imaginary, having neither actuality nor substance, is foreclosed from creating and attaining parity with the tangible. The legal manifestation of this is that no government, as well as any law, agency, aspect, court, etc., can concern itself with anything other than corporate artificial persons and the contracts between them. That the following Supreme Court ruling confirms the unlawful behaviour of the various parties, U.S. Supreme Court Hale v. Henkel, 1906. The decision of the United States Supreme Court states, the individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He is entitled to carry out his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no duty to the state or to his neighbours to divulge his business or to open his doors to an investigation so far as it may tend to incriminate him. He owes no duty to the state since he receives nothing therefrom beyond the protection of his life and property. His rights are such as existed by the law of the land, common law, long antecedent to the organisation of the state, and can only be taken from him by due process of law, and in accordance with the Constitution. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass upon their rights. Additional note. The subject of slavery has been addressed by many countries and it is deemed to be abhorrent at all levels. A case in question was heard in the United States of America's Supreme Court, and I state that this is applicable to the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. United States versus Schooner Amistad. This case was considered in 1839, with a decision in 1841. John Quincy Adams, former United States President, confirmed the following. When a living man appears in court to confirm his standing, he should be acknowledged as a hero and rewarded with medals. He should be recorded as a hero and our children should be told about him. But this court will not even acknowledge him as living and have prosecuted him as a legal person, legal entity, and not human. If the Supreme Court were to adopt a similar position to the South, and the prosecution of slaves, it would be confirming that living men and women with certain inherent lawful and moral rights were free to engage in insurrection with those who would deny them their freedom. John Quincy Adams then asked, if the Supreme Court were to take the position of the South in relation to the issue of slavery, and that it was correct, what would that mean to the Declaration of Independence? John Quincy Adams suggested that, if the Supreme Court were to agree with the South, we should just tear up the Declaration of Independence as the rights of living men and women no longer matter. I would take this further and say that this is also applicable to the following documents. The Acts of the Union, 1707, Magna Carta, 1215, King James Bible, 1611, and even the Declaration of Arbroath, 1320, which established the freedoms of all living men and women. Can you confirm if this is the position that the Supreme Court wished to adopt in relation to the documents mentioned above? John Quincy Adams was successful in this case, freeing the slaves concerned.
I write to confirm that all claims against living men, women and their property should be ceased immediately. It should also be noted that unless you can confirm that the statutory corporations, judges and courts involved had superior authority to that of the people, the common law court, the Supreme Court, the United Nations and God, they were guilty of committing crimes against the people. In conclusion, we the people require you to issue the court orders referred to above. In the event that these orders are not issued, we the people would require a date for a hearing to challenge the authority and jurisdiction of the court. This challenge would not be time-barred as it revolves around the issue of fraud. In the event that you fail to issue the required orders or a date for our challenge hearing, we the people will require you to confirm what authority you rely on to justify your position. If you are reluctant to comply with the above and believe that it is not in the public interest to proceed, we require you to issue an order setting aside all cases and issues covered in this notice without prejudice. It should also be noted that as living men and women who have obtained ownership of their fictitious name attached to them, we the people have also confirmed our standing as the beneficiaries of the named trusts. We the people also write to confirm that the statutory corporations, judges and courts involved in committing these crimes have been accessing our personal trusts unlawfully. Exhibit 6. Within the relevant courtrooms, all statutory individuals involved in these cases have a financial interest in the hearing, as they have obtained access to the named trust. Accordingly, these individuals should have lodged the appropriate tax returns, and should this matter not be dealt with, we the people will require a full forensic tax audit to confirm where all the money went. This will include copies of all tax returns for those involved including judges, clerks, solicitors, barristers, and the CPS, etc. We the people wish to draw your attention to the fact that this case is the most important one to come before this court, as it concerns the very nature of a living man and slavery. Your actions, and that of the Supreme Court, have a huge bearing on this issue. Please note, to ensure that the people have access to this court document and any replies, we have lodged a copy of the paperwork onto the Common Law Court website for information. All future paperwork in relation to this matter will also be uploaded to this site, www.commonlawcourt.com. You are hereby given 14 days from the date of receipt to respond to this notice, and a further 7 days within which to hear this issue. This matter should be dealt with as a matter of urgency, as it concerns life and death issues, which relate to COVID, health and travel matters. We the people, subject solely to the authority and jurisdiction of the Common Law Court.